In this video, we will walk you through ways to navigate Quest via Shell. The video will be split up into three sections, covering number one, Bash Basics, number two, Home and Project Directories, and number three, Permissions. In this first section, I'll be talking about Bash Basics. Before we get into what Bash is, let's go over what a shell is. Shell is a command processor that interprets and executes your commands, and there are many variations to it. So when we say interacting with Quest via shell, we are talking about interacting with Quest through the terminal or command prompt on your computer. Although we will focus on the shell interface in this video, there are some other ways to interact with Quest, including the Quest analytics nodes, which you can find out more about on our KB page. Bash, on the other hand, refers to a specific variation of a shell and its associated programming language. When you interact with Quest through shell, you will be using the Bash language. Quest consists of four login nodes and hundreds of compute nodes. When you first log into Quest, you will land on a login node. Because they are shared, the computational resources on the login nodes are quite limited so users are restricted on how much memory and cores they can use directly on the login nodes. For that reason, login nodes aren't where you will run most of your programs, but instead are where you will edit your files, test your code, move and manage your data, and submit jobs for the compute nodes to execute. You can learn more about the different ways to log into Quest, as well as how to submit jobs on the logging into Quest and submitting jobs videos or on the Quest KB pages on this slide. When you first log into Quest, you will start in your home directory, which is forward slash home forward slash NetID. The two directories that you will be working with most frequently in Quest are your home directory and your project directory, which is forward slash projects followed by any allocation ID that you are a part of. I will be talking about these directories in further detail in the following section of this video. Next, let's go over a handful of useful bash commands that can help get you started. First, we will go over some commands you can use to navigate directories. ls followed by directory path will list the files and any subdirectories in the specified directory or in your current directory if you don't specify a path. Adding the hyphen L flag will display additional information about the listed files and directories. In this example on the slide, you can see that there are two directories named codes and data and a text file named test.txt. The way that we can tell that codes and data are directories is that the sequence of characters on the first column starts with a D. I will talk more in depth about what this string of characters means in the last part of this video. PWD, which stands for print working directory, will return the path of your current working directory. In the first example on the slide, our current working directory is forward slash home forward slash net ID. CD stands for change directory. This will change your working directory to the specified one. You can see in the example that after moving into the data directory, PWD now returns our updated working directory path. Finally, CD with no argument will bring you back to your home directory. The next set of commands will help you manage files and directories. MKDIR followed by a new directory name we'll create a new directory. Here, you can see that we created a new directory named documentation, which we can see by running ls. Next, we will discuss a couple of commands to move files. The first one is mv, which stands for move. This command is followed by number one, the path to the original file, and number two, the path to the destination to which you would like to move this file. This command will move the specified file to the new location and delete it from the original location. In the example on this slide, we move the test.txt file to the data directory and move it back to its original location. 
The second command to move files is CP, which stands for copy. This command is followed by the same arguments, but differs from MB in that the original file isn't deleted, which makes CP a safer command to execute. In the example, we copy the test.txt file into the data directory. You can also use CP on directories by adding the hyphen R flag. Cat or less followed by a path to a file are commands that will help you look at the contents of this file. Cat will print the entire content of the file in your terminal session, which is useful for short files, but becomes cumbersome in the, if the file is multiple pages in length. Less will display the contents page by page using the spacebar or the arrow keys for navigation and which you can exit out of by entering Q. The last command for handling files is RM, which stands for remove and can delete files or directories. This command should be used with much caution because the projects directory on Quest is not backed up and deleting files there is permanent. When using RM, always add the hyphen I flag to help prevent deletion accidents as this will prompt confirmation for every removal. In the example on the slide, we remove the copy of the text file that we created earlier. We can also use this command on directories by adding hyphen R. If you are certain you really want to delete the directory and you don't want to confirm each file deletion, you can add the hyphen F flag. Another handy bash command is echo. Echo is used to print something, such as the contents of a variable. In the example on the slide, we create our own variable named var1 and print it using echo. Please note that in bash, we always use the dollar sign to point to a variable. The grep command helps you search for a specific string pattern. In the example on the slide, we first use grep to look for the sequence abc in our test.txt file, but no results are returned since this pattern does not exist in this file. When we try searching for the word content, grep successfully returns the row of the file that contains this pattern. The head command prints the first lines of a file. The number of lines is 10 by default, but you can also change this by running head hyphen number followed by file name to print the top n lines, for instance. In this example, we use head to print the top three rows of the measurements.csv file in the data directory. Finally, once you are all done with your work, you can end the SSH session by entering exit or logout. This will bring you back to your local computer's command prompt. If you would like more information on any of these bash commands, there are several resources you can consult. On Quest, the manual page of each command can be accessed by typing man followed by the command name on the command prompt. For beginning users, we recommend websites such as linuxsize.com, where you can search any command and get detailed documentation alongside examples. Next, Let's go over some variables that are defined in your bash session by default, referred to as environment variables. One basic environment variable is dollar sign home, which is set as the path to your home directory, forward slash home, forward slash your net ID. Notice that we are using the dollar sign again to access a variable here. Another important environment variable is dollar sign path. This is a variable that contains a list of directories that Quest searches for when you enter a command, which lets you access software with a single command. In our example on the slide, we first examine which directories are in our path by running echo path. Let's say you wanted to use the Conda software. If you enter Conda on your bash prompt, but the software Conda is not found in any of the directories in your path, Quest will return a command not found error. However, once you load the mini Conda module, 
the directory with the conda executable will be added to your path and quest will use that when you enter conda at your prompt please refer to our kb page to learn more about modules and software now that we have gone over the bash basics let's go over the home and project directories Everyone who has access to Quest has a home directory, which is forward slash home forward slash net ID. You can find your project directory at forward slash projects followed by whichever allocation ID you are a part of. The home and projects directories differ in several ways. First, let's talk about who has access. Only you can access your home directory whereas everyone in the allocation can access the files you put in the projects directory. Another big difference is the amount of storage space. Your home directory comes with 80 gigs of storage space, so don't write any large data files here. We recommend putting software or codes in your home directory. If your home directory fills up, your jobs will fail since they can't write any more data there. Quest Analytics session will also hang if your home directory fills up completely. You can check how full your home directory is by running the home du command. Your projects directory provides more storage space with a specific amount depending on the allocation. You can keep data or program outputs files in your project directory. You can check how full your projects directory is by running the check project command followed by allocation ID. Another important difference is backups. The home directories are backed up every 24 hours, but the projects directory is not backed up. So please be extremely cautious when deleting files. To recover a deleted file from your home directory, open a ticket with quest-help at northwestern.edu. For more information on home and projects directories, please refer to our KB page. Finally, let's talk about permissions. Permissions refers to the attributes of a file or a directory that defines whether a user can read, write, or execute the contents of that file or directory. You will always have full read and write permissions to the files that you create yourself. You may not have the same permissions for file, files you do not own, for example, on files created by someone else or files that are important for the system-wide operations of Quest. Permissions are defined at the individual user level and also at the level of user groups. As a Quest user, your groups are the allocations that you're a part of, which you can see by entering groups followed by your net ID at the Quest command prompt. You will have read and write permissions to the files in your allocation directories because you are a part of these groups. By default, files created in an allocation directory will have read and write permissions for the entire group that has access to that allocation. However, files created in your home directory will only have read and write permissions for you. This can cause some issues with sharing Say you create a file in your home directory and want to share this file with your other members of your allocation. If you use the MV command to move your file to the allocation directory, the file will retain its original permissions from your home directory and the other members of your allocation will not have read and write permissions to this file. That's why we highly recommend copying the file to your allocation directory using CP instead of using MV. CP will make the newly copied file inherit the group permissions of the allocation directory it's copied to, which will allow other members of your allocation to access the newly copied file. On Quest, you can see the permissions to a file or a directory by running ls-l in the directory. The first column of this output shows what are called permission strings. The first character of the permission string indicates whether the item is a file indicated by a hyphen or a directory indicated by the character D. The following three characters indicate the read, write, and execute permissions for the file owner. The next three characters indicate permissions for the group, and the next three are for all Quest users. For more information on Quest permissions, 
please see our KB page on the slide. In this video, we discussed how to navigate Quest via shell, including Bash Basics, home and project directories, and permissions. Please feel free to reach out to us at quest-help at northwestern.edu with any questions. Thank you for watching.